Rihanna is shy? Really? Let's talk about it. BET's Black Coffee starts now. Welcome to BET's Black Coffee. I'm Mark Lamont Hill with my co-host Gia Peppers. And Jameer Pond found his way back as well. Hey, 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 We have a special <laughs> guest. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special guest, though. Oh, you see his byline everywhere. He is an author. He's a journalist. He is amazing. He is Michael Arsenal. Welcome Ooh, to the show. Hi, black people. Black Thank man. You. Now, later in the show, we're going to be talking about mental health. So we want to get your thoughts on today's question of the day. It's for the brothers. When was the last time you cried? And not like at a funeral or when your baby's born, but when you're really crying, crying on a different circumstance. You know, like, when do you, when do you let those tears go? Go ahead, sign off on Facebook, YouTube, because we'll be reading the comments throughout the show. We want to know what you think. Now, I want to talk to y'all about some stuff. Yes. Yes. Get going. stuff. Yes, I'm, but wait. I'm feeling stuff. Yes, but before, before we get into the goodness of the show, I do have to let everybody know that BET is doing a new competition. What? Called nice. BET's Next Rap Store Live. It's going to be crazy. Store Live? A store. Okay. And so I'm going to be hosting it out at the BET uh, Experience in L.A., and you guys can have the chance to come out there. And actually, if you have boards, you can all submit Bors. them now. So make sure you guys go to BET.com backslash next rap star. And you guys can be possibly out at the BET Awards rapping in front of the greatest out right now. You know what I'm saying? Wait to get my freestyle up there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, can you start now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life is a traffic jam. <laughs> all right. Like, we, 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 that's enough. That's enough. But I ain't even dropped science. I don't want you to intimidate <laughs> the other you people. The oh, okay. I the saw knowledge. the knowledge was coming, but saw it? I saw it. You could dig the knowledge? I, I saw it. Okay, I saw got all you. of it. Got but you. I don't want to intimidate the people. You're right. You're right. You're right. Anyway, bt.com backslash next rap star. If you would like to submit the last moment is literally tonight at 11.59, so y'all could be famous. Like, yeah, do it. That's lit. Yeah, they should do it. Send your SoundCloud link. <laughs> that's right. They everybody. are going to send you your SoundCloud link. Please. <laughs> it's already started. It's, already started. <laughs> like, it's too late. Not I might to me. get one later. No, yeah, don't send it to Gia Peppers. It's at BET. At BET. Gia Don't give her those problems. <laughs> You're anyway. trash for that. I know. You hear him? He's like, DM her. DM her. No, <laughs> You got every struggle rapper Adder. in the world right. DMing. Add her. Gia Pepper. Add her. Yes. Anyway, but yes, let's get back to the combo that we was about to have. What you was about to say? Go ahead. I, so, some good things happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, the Golden State Warriors won. They sure did. That made me... That was the good part. I'm starting with the good. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. I'm starting with the good. I couldn't let Toronto win in five. Or you, four, excuse you me. You couldn't? Yeah. As, an, as a bitter Philadelphian, oh. Oh, oh, I am no. rooting against Toronto, Drake, hockey, syrup, denim, anything oh, in Canada. I don't want. Battling jeans <laughs> right now. I'm talking about up top. Got the tuxedo. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, the, the Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> but I was also inspired to see Kevin Durant mm. yeah. hit, hit the court. It, it made me happy to see him on the court because I know how hard he worked to get back. Right. Um, he got injured. After the first quarter, he, he put in work the first quarter, 11 points, mm -hmm. shot the ball well. Dom, he was dominating the game. Um, but then he got injured. He re-injured that and leg. they were cheering. That's where the... Toronto that, fans are trash. I thought Canadians were the nice ones. I, I thought, thought that, too. And then they, they, you don't cheer injuries. Those, that's a rule in sports. Yeah. You, you can cheer. You can boo people. You can boo lots of things. You don't boo injuries. Go ahead, Jameer. Okay. Uh, speaking of that... What about when Philadelphia, <laughs> oh. uh, the 76ers had booed Joe Kim Noah when he got injured, when he was literally rolling around on the floor talking about, ah, my leg, and Philly stood up like, yeah. Okay, I yeah. was there. Okay. I was, actually, I was actually sitting right next to him when he fell. Mm -hmm. One, we didn't know he was injured. He rolled around holding his <laughs> leg. He's light-skinned, okay? What does that well, mean? We didn't know whether this was... Like, light-skinned basketball players sometimes okay. complain to the refs a little bit more. That's an unwritten rule in basketball that everybody understands. Draymond so, and LeBron complain a lot, too, though. It's different, though. Oh, how? Y'all focus on the wrong part. <laughs> okay. I'm focused right. on Kevin Steph Durant. Let's really get back to complaining. it. Okay. I, I'm, I'm focused on... Oh, Steph complained every time. A little bit, but he not like... LeBron and them be like, hey, bro. Look here, dog! Like, in He's their a, face. See, y'all, y'all, y'all. I love them, but I'm just saying. Kevin Durant. <laughs> I'm not gonna let y'all. He's staring it back. Cause you go, no, because they're gonna get me in trouble, all the light skinned people. Are, and I'm joking, light skinned people, there's no, I don't believe in they're colorism. They're already now in your mentions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't believe in colorism. I'm just joking. Jakeem Noah, we, we didn't know he was injured. When we found out he was injured, 
we stop booing. Right. I don't like when people injure, but I guess my, what really frustrates me is going into the, the last week, people were saying Kevin Durant could play if he wanted to. All that money he makes, mm -hmm. he should be playing basketball. It was like our conversation yesterday. Yeah. They, they talk to these people like they're not people right. and like right. they don't have real bodies. Right. And like, and like they're almost like they're slaves or objects. And it's like this dude came back. People were saying he was he could have came back last game. He should work harder. He should do this. He wanted to be on that court as much as anybody else. He risked his life and his career and maybe a $250 million contract to go back on that court. Absolutely. And then he makes it on the court. He plays a, a, a thing. Then they injure him, and then like now I heard people saying well, he came back too soon. Why would he do that? Absolutely, you it, can't win. You can't win with the internet. We all know this. Mm -hmm. If you do anything, it's there's a commentary. But I think Kevin did come back too soon, and only because I remember watching the game. The first quarter was so sloppy and so intense. There were so many turnovers, so many times where guys were on the floor for no reason, just from Toronto and the Warrior side. And so I was watching like. I don't really you know, time to sit. Like, the, usually yeah. when you come back after a month off, they say you can do the first five minutes, you sit for the... Or, or you, you take off the first five minutes, we'll put you in later. Yeah. They give you moments. He played the entire first quarter. So I already felt really uneasy watching the game. And then to see him actually get hurt, it was one of... Like, you could tell the entire breath was taken out of the stadium. Like, even yeah. after the cheering, once the players... Um, and started to surge, and the other player who told the, the Raptors fans to, like, not boo, because Act that could have yeah. yeah. been anybody on that floor on either team. So, shout out to them. But it was sad to watch, because KD obviously really had the heart to play, but mm -hmm. his body wasn't ready, like, and no I'm, matter what. Boy needs some rest, some milk. He got to get back. Um, Cause when he it's come to New York, when he come to New York, I mean they're gonna expect him. Oh, to see his orthopedic surgeon? No, 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 no. <laughs> he ain't to, co nobody comes leave. to New York. Okay, that's like the biggest myth in sport. Everybody, I'm, I'm, to New in, York. I'm in Brooklyn. He might be in Brooklyn. Watch when Kyrie number. come next year. Kyrie might be coming to Brooklyn. Kyrie coming. That's a good selling point. Do you watch basketball? I was gonna say I'm sorry, Rockets fans. Oh. That's the extent of my life. Oh, oh he's. It. I forgot the Houston Terrible. part. It's a pain. I stopped watching. It's painful to be a, like a Houston sports fan in general it's because you're just set up and fail. It started with the Orioles yeah. and it just kind of like kept going. Had a bright spot with the Astros and then the Rockets. They are the most frustrating because that was hard to watch. I actually did watch that series. Okay. Yeah. And I went back to my chicken wing, so I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about something happy. I like, said a prayer for KD, but that was as good as it went. Let's talk about something happier. How about Rihanna? She makes me happy. Always makes Rihanna me happy. makes everybody happy. Rihanna's it's gorgeous. Pride Month, but I would leave the gays behind just for her. <laughs> I love Rihanna. Very special place in my heart. Let me shake your hands. Yeah, Let me shake you your hands. That's that. honest. <laughs> we can't say that. But um, she obviously was on the cover of Interview Magazine. Her cover came out yesterday. She was beautiful. It looked like the most simple, like, shots of her with, like, bright flash and right. just being mad, voluptuous now. And I love the interview. Um, I'm sure you read it. Uh, yes. what did I you was think focused of it? more on the pitches. Oh, mm -hmm. the interview was actually really good. It was, I a thought so too. it was a nice conversation between Sarah Paulson and Rihanna. Exactly, because they did Ocean's Eight together. I liked their little banter in between it. I liked that she admitted that we need the album, yeah. although she didn't put a timetable on it. It's fine. Yeah, we're never. She's busy being rich. Right. We'll get it in twenty years. It's, so it's all right. I'm but she said it. she was shy. Yeah. That, I can see that. Which is so cute. Because well, we still don't say her name right. So Rihanna. She thought, yeah. Rihanna. It's Rihanna. And we, none of us say that. To and the point where she like, doesn't even correct. say it right anymore. Yeah, yeah. She no, she like, gave up. Yeah, like, <laughs> whatever. Okay. Right. I, I think it's hard to imagine people who are that outgoing. To be shy? To be shy. I know as a, as a, a y'all know me a little bit better. You know I'm a, kind of a social weirdo. So, like, if I'm out, I want to be away as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I can talk in front of a camera, but I'm not, like, I don't want to be around. Like, I don't, I, I'm not outgoing. You hate humans. I didn't go that far, but okay. sure. Yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and so, like, no, but I'm shy. And so I could imagine being, if you're somebody as famous as Rihanna, yeah. and you are shy, it's probably magnified even more, especially when you have the kind of, um, kind of brand of, of being, like, the, the bad girl and, yeah. being, right. And, right. and being so cutting edge. People expect you to want to be a certain kind of person, and you might yeah. not want to be. That must be hard. Yeah, I definitely... I mean, honestly, my favorite part of the interview, though, was the faith talk, when she was talking mm. about how she's been praying and fasting, and she did her first devotional when she was seven years old. Right. Like, that's so crazy. People yeah. don't... The Saints went up for that part. Okay. <laughs> the, Saints... <laughs> the Saints went marching in. Mm -hmm. For sure, which is so dope, though, because I think there's this idea that when you have to be a Christian or you're a Christian woman, you have to look a certain way, you have to speak, you know, like any any uh, yeah. Bible verse has to be the first thing you talk about. Right. And then Rihanna said, no, 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 I mean, I've been twerking down yeah. and, and busting it down, but I'm a Christian. You are the a and Mary Mary needs right now. Wow! <laughs> first of all, wow. you did come for Erica Campbell, okay? I love her. Oh, well, no, I, I love nice Mary. I was referring to, you know, the one Me about Mary? The Trump. Trump Me Mary. Mary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trump yeah. Mary is this. Trump but Mary is different. The way you just made this sound, like, I, I agree. Like, I'm a yeah. heathen now, but I, that was really sweet. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> well, you do have Chris, a book called I Can't Date yes, Jesus. Christians need this PR, though. Yeah. We're really good for this. I'm just yeah. saying. We're going to talk, but I want to change gears a bit because yeah, yesterday like, we, we started talking about YG and I want to make sure that we, that we talk about it because um, he was on The Breakfast Club yeah. and it was a really interesting moment when he talked to uh, Charlemagne about crying and how rarely he cries. I don't know if you saw it. Look, I want you to look at it for a second. Like, I'm going to express about... my feelings for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm expressing my feelings. Not if you're afraid to cry. I, when... I'm not afraid to cry. I just don't be crying. When the last time you bride, YG? When a homie did, when he went to heaven. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All right. But, like, I cry, but, like, I don't really cry a lot. I just don't cry a lot, bro. Like, I don't cry. Did it make you feel better when you did? Nah, it made me feel like you gotta stop this. You gotta stop. Nah, what the fuck you doing? Stop. That's wild, yo. That it, every time I see that, it makes me sad. Yeah. yeah, I I I have a problem with especially us like black men being emo. I call it emotionally constipated, right? Oh. Like we know that there's something that affects us. And then we just, it's like PTSD. Mm. Like, you, you see all these documentaries, and I talk to people who've been in gangs and ha or are in gangs or, like, went away to war, mm. and they come back, and it's just, like, emotionally gone. It's like, I can't cry no more. I, I ran out of tears because all this is happening. You grow up yeah. years without expressing yourself. That's a problem. And a lot of people think, like, oh, if you show emotion and you cry, you saw. You know, you, you huh, I can't say it because my mom watching, but, like, you saw. And I think the most vulnerable and strong thing that a man could do is express his feelings. Mm. Or a person could do express his feelings. Because you're, you're acknowledging that something is wrong with me. And the, the human reaction is to cry or to feel some type of emotion. And people put up this, like, wall. Like, I can't show emotion. I'm too strong. Like, nah. Cry, I, bro. I, I hear it. I, I... I think with YG, I feel like he is acknowledging emotion, though, right? He's yeah. not saying, like, I don't have emotion. Because some people are emotionless. Yeah. yeah. He's not there. He's saying, look, this is sad. I know I'm supposed to be crying right now. I but I can't. It was an emotionally intelligent thing, this, the, the way he phrased it, because I can relate to that. It's kind of what you meant. I don't like to cry. And I don't, I've, I, I've written that. I, I don't usually, I don't say that it was a badge of honor. But I personally just grew up, like, the violent homes, like yeah. a lot of stuff. So I also saw crying sometimes used as a way to manipulate people. Oh. Plus, I wow. cried so much as a child. So I actually knew like the hardest of the type of guys. That's particularly my dad. Like I knew they were capable of crying, but I guess I didn't feel comfortable because you do kind of build up a wall. Because regardless of how you you see how people are suspicious of you, which is how I could be with some people, which is my own stuff. I got to work out with a mm. future Frazier or. People are just kind of used to coming at you for different reasons. For me, just being gay or like being considered softer, and people you have right. to let them most little know we can always go. But I wouldn't give that because I attached the two, and like I know that I should be better than that by now, and I've worked on that. But it can be hard because when you're conditioned a certain way, right. is emotionally aware or whatever, like old habits are sometimes really hard to break, right. especially yeah. if you're not really still given the space to well, people will accept that. Right. I appreciate him saying that though, because I know a lot of people feel that way. Even when I want to cry, it can be very difficult. Yeah. Wow. Then usually my immediate reaction is like anger. Mm -hmm. And then I have to like catch myself not to allow that to happen anymore. I'm like, it's okay, right. let right. it out. So people used it as like, when, when they saw you vulnerable, they used it as a... As I just a think point. for me, sometimes it's associated with femininity. So that right. in of itself can be a problem. Them, but I also just saw from the most masculine person that I grew up being around, also so you can see it a different way. I know that's a very specific mm -hmm. experience, but I do think overall it's just kind of hard because people in general are not kind of... There's a lot of emotions around the same way like sex, but that doesn't mean people know what they're doing. Wow. And that's I think a, a lot of people don't too. have the tools about how to deal with their emotions, specifically within like our community, the way men are taught to behave. Yeah. That's yeah. good. We got somebody yeah. writing in uh, on uh, Facebook. Lewis says, I cried like a baby watching... Uh, they see us, how they see us. I cried like a baby. Rashad Border said, mental health is everything on YouTube. Um, both of those things I think are really important. Um, you mentioned trauma and, and yeah. talking about what it means to grow up in a neighborhood where you see violence or where your friends are incarcerated or where mm -hmm. a lot of death is happening. Um, and so when you watch something like how they see us, and you almost have like an aerial view now of an entire system that views you that right. way. When they see us, excuse me. Yeah. Um, it, it triggers you. Yeah. It, it can trigger you. Um, but once you get triggered, how do you manage that stuff? I, I, yeah. I mean, I cry more now in the last probably five years than I did the first 35 years. Do you and feel that, better? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a release. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I cry a lot. I always, I think 
there's so many like stigmas in between like especially when black men and women are like getting in those spaces that they're super intimate like feeling like you can't cry in front of your woman is like feeling like she feels like the world is going to fall apart and I personally don't believe that but I know some women feel like if I see my man cry that's a little too much so I can understand there's a lot of so women many, say that yeah, yeah there's so many blockades as to like allowing black men to express the gamut of right. emotions, which is crazy because you all are human. Yeah. Like, so I just, I would love to, and, yeah, explore And even, that. like, and to, to your point, in relationships, you want me to be a whole person. You want me to be a, a person with love for you, but you don't want me to cry. You don't right. want me to express myself. Right. There's, I don't, there's no man that can sit up here and be 24-7 Angry thug, that that that's that's a problem. That's, that's a problem. That's what people want a symbol, right not necessarily a person. Mm. Right, 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 right. What you think of they're, of they're supposed to be, not actually right. all of it. What black yeah. women, men think like what they look like. Strong, like what they're supposed dominant, to you know, assertive, and just provide. Mm. No time for emotion. That's not healthy. How, how do we do that? Because T.J. Grillo is on Facebook uh, writing in and says emotional constipation. Perfect description. Go ahead, Jameer. Check. But but how do you unconstipate yourself? Right? How do you how do you create a space to get that emotion out? For me, it was therapy. For me, yeah. it's mm -hmm. conversation. What role does mental health and mental health care um, play in all this? Absolutely. Right. I I think it would be therapy, but and I know I, I don't like when people say black people don't like therapy. I I think there's some truth to like people are having aversion to mental health, but I think that's a collective thing that just disproportionately impacts us because you know, like this is this is Ronald Reagan's fault. Right. It started right, right. in California, it carried into the president of the 80s, so like mental health in America is like ultimately like decimated. It's very much like a luxury. Like personally for me, I know I need therapy. I've never been to therapy. I tried to go to therapy once when I was 19, still under my mom's insurance. And the guy, I was, and I'm very aware of, self-aware of what was going on. I tried to explain this. Highs, ups, and downs. Some, I gave a little bit about West Bank. He just basically said, you have highs and lows, and you'll be fine. In mm -hmm. hindsight, I didn't realize I was just a white man. didn't know what it was. This, like, right. lanky black kid right. trying to say, this all happened to me. What do I do? Right. I, I wanted, he just didn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. right. And for some, that's not, and I realized, that at least talking to people about it, that's not the first time they felt that way. So it's one is about just having the, the, the luxury, this shouldn't be a luxury, but the privilege and having metal insurance that'll allow you to get that, or, yes. if you, or if you don't have it, knowing how to access low income or like free thing services, mm -hmm. and then finding the person who be willing to talk to you, right. or at least want to like understand right. you. Because fit is important. Right. Fit is yes. important. I remember years ago I had a, um, a therapist who I was had a great relationship with, and then I recommended her to another friend of mine. Uh, and he called me the next day and was like, yo, and he, and he was gay. And he said, yo, like, when I went to her, she, she found out I was gay. And she started writing on stuff on the paper and shaking her head. Oh. And I had this awful experience in therapy. Wow. Because she, she, she clearly was making all kinds of judgments about me right. based on that. So yeah. that wasn't a good fit. And it also made me uncomfortable with the therapist. Because I didn't yeah, want I didn't right, want a homophobic right, therapist, right, right? Right, right. So, but but it just it, it's it's fit. Everybody's different. Yeah. yeah. You you need a therapist that will call you. Some people need a therapist who will, like be demanding mm -hmm. and yeah. create action items. Some people just need a space to vent and figure stuff out. Right. Some people need a mix of both. Some people try to outsmart their therapist. People like you, uh -huh. you know what I mean, uh, and me. You know what I mean. Sometimes like we'll be in, you know you'll be in therapy and, you, and you'll be saying stuff that you know will get a certain reaction from right. your therapist. Yeah. Yeah. Be, and it's like you're manipulating because we we work in public, so we know how to engage people. Right. Right. And you can end up outsmarting your therapist and. and, and and not doing yourself any good. So it's yeah. about finding a fit and finding somebody who can do things for you. But you need resources to do that. Right. And you need a tool. Regards to the interview, it was really sad to watch. Like, if you guys watched the whole interview, mm -hmm. it was so hard to watch because YG is obviously grieving to the point where, like, it, he's questioning everything in life. Yeah. And, and, I mean, grief brings that. Grief yeah. brings questions that you never even yeah. thought would come through your mind. Definitely. Um, and it brings a whole new level of fear to life. And so, for me, it was cool to see Charlemagne try to encourage him to, like, go talk. Like, mm -hmm. even if you're not going to cry, talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Because I think, I mean, obviously, Charlemagne and a lot of the people who do have big positions, like, you know, you guys, front-facing people, are encouraging people to go to seek mental health, right. help, and therapy. So mm -hmm. I think that's so helpful within, like, the responsibility we have as a people, because it's hard. Life is hard and traumatic yeah. and kind of disgusting at times. You have gotta let it out. That clip reminded me that a lot of, as, as we have a reputation, but as a lot of black men do articulate, particularly in their art and their interviews, that they, that they are concerned about their mental health. Yeah. They may not use the language that people associate it with, right. but it's there. The problem is that he's even like, a millionaire has access to stuff, but mm. it still it didn't connect. It maybe go because he's not right. he's not taught to go seek it. Exactly right, and and that's I mean that's a, also a, a great point. Like 
everybody's not going to seek out therapy, right? Which is, you should if you're going through trauma, but everybody's not going to do that. But there needs to be an outlet there no, yeah. for you that's going to be positive for you to vent. Right. People don't even vent. Like, no. I, I hear people in interviews, you know, like, my, you know, my homeboy got shot, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that was my, bro, that was my bro, everything like that. But, you know what I'm saying? It's all right. You know, it's cool. You know, right. keep moving. You know, I'm you're deflecting. You defle- you're right, right. You're deflecting thing, your feelings. Not to right. tell our business and to be too open. Exactly. Right, you got to right, create right, safe right, space. Right. As soon as we romanticize the safe space, yeah. like, yeah. we'll be like, oh, the barbershops with brothers get together. We get together, but when we get together and talk in the barbershop, we're talking about other people. Right. Right? You're never in the barbershop like, yo, this is what happened to me yesterday. I need y'all right. insight. It's like, yo, did you hear what LeBron did yesterday? Exactly. You see that video of something. So that girl out there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and so it becomes about out, out facing stuff, not inward facing stuff. We yeah. gotta create those spaces for, for each other. You know, and, and, and NASA Whiting Great is on YouTube. She says, great topic as a person who lives with mental illness. There's a stigma attached to it, but it's my lifestyle. And Janelle Roden says, Yep, I'm the ain't nobody got time to cry because I have to handle this type. Right. Not healthy but necessary to survive sometimes. Mm. Uh, Keith St. John says, uh, blacks have PTSD just from living in the hood. And Vixen J says, I've been going to therapy for the past few months, and it was the best. That's what's up. It was the best experience of my life. Um, I think it's important, though, that the sister said that, because I don't want to push black women out of this conversation. So, well, first, I also think that we as black women do, do... are intentional about creating safe spaces for each other. Mm. Um, I think we are very open about it now. I think at this point in you know the black girl magic movement, we're also talking about black girl realness and the messiness behind the magic. I mean, I'm literally a part of a podcast, mm. black girl podcast, y'all should listen to it, where we do spend an hour and a half to two hours talking about the traumas and the things that we're dealing with on a daily basis. And it's been so empowering because women who listen to it in their corporate spaces where they're the only black girls are like, Oh, whatever you're saying to me is literally the best thing because I feel seen and heard. Yeah. So I think as as people, we have to create spaces, even if it's just within our personal friendships. Like yeah. Yeah. I see there's difference in the light in your eyes. Let's go over here and yeah. talk a little bit. You be accountable, and that's a good. Yes. You need to be accountable for your friends and your family. Right. But if you know, you should be accountable for someone else. Right? A- exactly. Um, I was thinking about you uh, yesterday. I was I was because I knew you were coming on the show, and I was looking at the news. Uh, in Botswana, they announced um, that the that the uh, they had anti uh, LGBT legislation, right? Essentially, mm-hmm. it was illegal. Gay sex was illegal, right. and, and they overruled that as a civil rights thing. It's crazy, which is a great advance. In Kenya last month, the opposite right. happened. They reaffirmed yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Um, but I kept thinking about you know, particularly during during this particular month, what it means to live in a world where the, where rights are still up around the world, but, but, but even in the United States where people's rights are still up for grabs, legislation is still going in, in the yeah. wrong direction. Like, how are you making sense of this moment? That's so crazy. Uh, pride is always like a conflicting time because on one end you want to be visible and be outspoken, but it, it, it can't go unsaid. Like, it, particularly under this administration, LGBTQ violence has risen sharply, mm. dramatically, because the tone has been set in the same way. Like, white supremacy wants to eliminate everyone, particularly, like, people... Like, man, I, I think about just all, all the black trans women being murdered. Mm. Um, yeah, we're up to 10 now. The fact that, like, even... I just... Uh, casually, even, like, white gay men who have access... I saw Andy Cohen tweeting, like, on Instagram, saying he's going to talk about how the surrogacy laws and how that prevents him from having children, which is a very expensive problem, but it's still a problem if you even get to that certain level. The fact that just a lot of black queer men are dying of HIV. Yeah. Not so much because we are dramatically in more dangerous activity. It's actually the opposite. It's just the fact that, like, the resources, people are not... Mm-hmm. They've written about this for years. Like, these organizations don't even know how to reach black people. For a long time, even in Harlem, I just saw an ad with a black... Um, a whole family of, like, black queer kids happy. Before that, I actually only saw, like... The only time I saw queer was, like, a black guy and a white guy linked together. Mm, like, right. what, I was like, that's cute, but what does this have to do with... The, yeah. the, 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 this neighborhood ain't changed that much yet. So it's always like a conflict. Like I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to be alive for multiple reasons, but it, it doesn't lose sight of the fact that like it's it's hard for me. It's, and on a personal level, just family members still struggling with certain things that I just don't have the means to even like right. help. How do you deal with it? Because I, I know in your book, I, I, I yeah. can't Jesus, you talk about some of this stuff. So. Yeah, and I'm working on I'm working on my second. I don't want to die poor by my like private like the private student loan industry. Um, it's a bit of a mind. I don't know if I can cuss, but it's it yeah. messes with you. I mean, it's yeah. a mind fuck it's a mind because. Is. Yeah. W- People see you a certain way and associate visibility with already having certain things, but the reality is like that still comes with like baggage. Mm-hmm. You still gotta help other people. You don't you don't have the access to help people in the way that you really mm-hmm. want to yet. Um, it, 
I don't know. I just, like, I'm happy for Pose. Like, that's premiering today. I'm yes. friends with Janet Mark. I'm so proud of her. Yeah, that's amazing. I, like, that is so important oh, to be on TV, fine. and the premiere is great, but at the same time, another trans woman died over the weekend. Right. There's some black gay boy that, for the mil like, I had to write about, I'm tired of having to write about gay black kids killing themselves. Right. And that being, like, to me, I, I do not advocate suicide, but I can Im I'd imagine what is it yeah. like to feel that lonely because I've had feelings like that for other reasons, but part of those, it's, just, it's, it's always a mix. Like, you're, you, I never lose sight that I'm very lucky to be here, no matter what problems I think I have, because there are literally people related to me that right. it's still much harder and I can't do as much. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you a point because you, you brought up like the separation in, in the LGBT community amongst still black and white, which I think for a lot of straight people, you come in with this ignorance that all gay people are the same, everybody's like the, yeah. the exact same, but there's a lot of, there's still a lot of separation even in, within a marginalized community. So can you talk about the hardships that you face, I guess, facing like I mean, identity? Racism is racism. I, yeah. I mean, there's a little book in the audience, the first line is I don't care about white people like that. And I don't mean it in a way like I just, I don't just stand, have a disdain for white people. I hate everyone equally. <laughs> white people, it's I'm not sure. that, it's just the, it's, it's, when you talk about black queerness or like, particularly black queerness, you have people in the mainstream spaces anyway, you usually talk about it within the context of white people don't want to smash black people and they're blaming that on the HIV crisis, but that's not the actual issue. Gotcha. It's not sexual racism, it's the fact that black people don't have access to adequate health care. Mm -hmm. And again, like these organizations are not making the means to prevent HIV, which is a very preventable thing now. It's like the racism isn't that you don't want to have sex with me, it's that you are not providing me and mine adequate yeah, access. It's structural. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, and even in the context of wanting to confront black homophobia, I'm always put in on, partially on the defense because people try to make it seem like black people are more dramatically homophobic or transphobic than everyone else, and like statistically that doesn't happen. It's like you want to acknowledge the fact that when we talk about black trans women being killed, black men stop killing them. That's a real statement. Right. However, that does not mean we're so much worse than everybody else. It's that, gotcha. it's that we're all together, and if you're gonna, you just, that's, that's, just act, that's a segregation right. more than anything. Because black people self-identify more as LGBT than white people do they have for a long time. Most of the black, most of the queer parents in the country are poor black lesbians in the South. It's not white wow. people, but you associate all this with whiteness. Black people, like the, blackness is also a lot of times queerness just by default because it's the other. So. I want to talk about that. Like, I want to confront straight black men or straight yeah. black women mm -hmm. and their attitudes. Mm -hmm. But usually when I'm in certain spaces like writing, they always want to thrust upon that, well, you know black people are so much worse. Right. Even in, like, that has a lot to do with not because black people are inherently homophobic. If anything, we've always respected, like, gender and all that stuff. Right. Uh, gender, uh, non-binary is what I meant. Um, but those are like white, uh, those are white Protestants from here going over there messing up the laws because they're losing the battle over here. Well, sort of. Right. That's the problem. Like, it's right. always, you can't just pick, you can't focus on one thing. It's complicated, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. we don't allow nuance, so it's kind of... So it becomes That's, this really, yeah. not to pardon the pun, but like a black-white thing, yeah. as opposed yeah. to all these different shades of it. Uh, we're going to keep more comments coming in from you. We want to always take more of your comments throughout the show. Uh, today's question of the day, of course, uh, was about whether or not you cried, so we want to make sure we get a response to that. But before that, we want to know if you got bars. We got more details right now on how you can become BET's next rap star. I was in the back with the bailers. You was doing fate with the fibers. You was getting run down by the dippers. We were the ones with the tippers. You can't go to the ends. Me, I'm there in my slippers. Blowing trees at the whippers. Comfy taking pictures. Night make chains, no switches. You ain't never been a bad boy. I always roll with the stickers. Move silent with things that make noise. You man move with guys that get bored. Man, I don't know what that's like. Can we come back with them toys? Crew, it's cold, no frostbite. That's right. So people can send those bars in. Uh, yeah. Do they think? They were gonna we're gonna be in LA hanging yes. out. I mean, I just oh, but first yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for being so open and like yeah. helping us to understand it because it's it is so deep and so mm -hmm. layered, but just the just the tip of the iceberg was able to help me a little bit more. So I thank you for likewise. Yeah, definitely. I know I, it's not you know you're not always you know a spokesperson for your whole community, but just helping and and us understanding it. Thank you. No, I'm thank again. You. I'm I'm lucky to be here for multiple reasons. I can't. They use is available. Support indie oh, bookstores. Yeah, yeah, wherever support bookstores. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely support indie bookstores and definitely buy. I can't date Jesus. It's a great book. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite books of, of, of the year. And you know, I, I really mean that because we talk trash yeah. about books we don't like. Uh, <laughs> earlier, we were talking about mental health in the black community. And we asked, brothers, 
When was the last time you cried? We got some good responses. Haroline from YouTube says, I cried from the 30th of May to the 5th of June wow. during a heartbreak. Ooh. Oh, man. We understand that. Oh, that get better, yeah. 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 That's like the kind of thing that we should be honest about because, again, your heart gets broken. For some men, the response is hypersexuality. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm yep. going to smash. I, yep. I'm going to smash my way th through this. Yeah. You know Ain't what I mean? Work. It, it, it doesn't not work. Um, and you got to go to the clinic. So. Drugs. <laughs> Drugs, alcohol, hypersexuality. Numbing yourself. Numbing yourself. Yeah, Some people yeah, numb yeah. it with church. You know what I mean? They don't actually yeah, deal with the that's issue. That's very true. You know what I mean? That's a good, that's that's a good point. A good point. You, 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 you can't do that, right? You have to work through this stuff, and crying doesn't fix everything, but, but it, it, helps. it helps. It helps because yeah. it, it, it acknowledges the pain. Right. You got to start with and the pain. Yeah. That you're human. Yeah. Like, first, you're, you're a human being. It hurts. Yes. Right. But the, that out. And the cry from heartbreak acknowledges vulnerability. Yeah. And that's the, that's the piece that's sometimes the, ch the challenge uh, the most. The mm -hmm. pride there is tough. Like, it, exactly. Especially depending on how they broke up. Right. Yeah. That's real vulnerability, not the Drake's vulnerability. I'm going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> wow! <laughs> no, sometimes it's pain ain't vulnerability. Yeah, like he'll be like, it's a little oh, manipulative. I'm a sad boy. Yes. yes. Right. You gotta watch the manipulative That's vulnerability. That's when you gotta watch for light skin, man. I'll give y'all. That, <laughs> there we go. Well, you put your we head come like full this. circle. Oh, That's why you coming back. Cause you took you, you took my side on this. All right. Remember to pick up again his book, I Can't Date Jesus. It is an awesome book. It's in stores right now, but especially independent bookstores. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and of course you can see us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. But before we go, go, we're gonna be on Twitter for a whole other conversation. It's called Black Coffee to Refill. We want to see you there. So go right now. See you soon. Thank you.